In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're all very welcome this morning to St. Saviour's Church and those of you joining us online as we celebrate this second Sunday of Christmas. Christmas, of course, still continues, and we celebrate and remind ourselves of the wonder of the incarnation of the Word. The Word who, as John reminds us in today's Gospel, was with God, was God, from the very beginning of all things. That the Word was made flesh and lived among us demonstrates the depth of God's love for us, which we are reminded of too each day at the altar as we re-offer that most precious gift that we have received. So as we prepare to do so now, my brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have appeared visibly in our own nature. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have raised up in yourself all that was cast down. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us back to the heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, splendor of faithful souls, graciously be pleased to fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all peoples by the radiance of your light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. a reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Wisdom speaks her own praises. In the midst of her people, she glories in herself. She opens her mouth in the assembly of the Most High. She glories in herself in the presence of the Mighty One. Then the Creator of all things instructed me. 
and he who created me fixed a place for my tent. He said, pitch your tent in Jacob, make Israel your inheritance. From eternity in the beginning he created me, and for eternity I shall remain. I ministered before him in the holy tabernacle, and thus was I established on Zion. In the beloved city he has given me rest, and in Jerusalem I wield my authority. I have taken root in a privileged people, in the Lord's property, in his inheritance. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ to be holy and spotless and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes to make us praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. That will explain why I, having once heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love that you show towards all the saints, have never failed to remember you in my prayers and to thank God for you. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see what hope his call holds for you, what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being, but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men, a light that shines in the dark, a light that darkness could not overpower. A man came sent by God, his name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. The word was the true light that enlightens all men, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him who was born not out of human stock or the urge of the flesh or will of man, but of God himself. The word was made flesh and lived among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is his as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John appears as his witness. He proclaims, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he existed before me. Indeed, from his fullness we have all of us received, yes, grace in return for grace, since, though the law was given through Moses, grace and truth have come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, It is the only Son who is nearest to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Is your Christmas tree still up? Are there still gaudy and tasteless baubles hanging from its branches? Do you still have tinsel draped around the picture frames or some greenery around the fireplace? I hope that the answer to all of these questions is yes, because As we all know, Christmas is very much not yet over. Today is the second Sunday of Christmas, the tenth day of Christmas in the traditional counting, although I'd forgive you if your decorations didn't extend to the customary leaping lords for the day. Yet some people will have already taken down their trees, removed their reindeer, boxed up the baubles, Indeed, I have one family member who spent all of New Year's Day expunging every trace of Christmas cheer and decoration from the house, and was told of a friend of hers who removed everything on Christmas Day itself. Now, although it has become slightly de rigueur for a certain sort of cleric to bemoan the trends of wider society, this is not just my turn at having a grumble about loss of tradition or the true meaning of Christmas there is an important point to be made here. This mindset, which declares that Christmas is finished before it's even begun, before the first day is over, is not dissimilar from the thinking which gives us things like dry January, veganuary, or some other manner of puritanical prohibition, just as the skies are getting grayer and the weather is worsening. It sees Christmas Day as the end the end of a lengthy build-up coming to a crashing halt on the 25th, giving way almost immediately to the next thing, the next event. It's a flash in the pan. It's ephemeral. The fleeting excitement of the day is all done and dusted by Boxing Day. 
But this is all wrong. And I don't just mean abstaining from booze or curtailing celebration, which are two things I stand firmly against. But this whole attitude, one which fails to prepare properly for Christmas, and so then fails to understand what it is is being celebrated when it begins, and so misses out entirely on something far more life-giving, uplifting, and fundamentally transformative than a gym membership or four weeks without eating carbs. Of course, Christmas does end, even if some of us might prefer to keep to the Tudor custom of decorations up and festivities prolonged until Candlemas in February, there is nonetheless still an end, and thank goodness for that. We cannot feast forever, and eventually all that cake will take its toll. But it's what is left afterwards, what endures, that is important and is revealing. For those who see Christmas only as a chance to eat and drink to excess, to cover the place in decorations, or even just primarily for seeing family and friends, once that's finished, once all that is over, nothing remains except bad hangovers and bulging waistlines. Whereas what should remain, what does remain if we have been and are being attentive and prepared, is the joy that is engendered by the revelation of the intensity, of the depth of God's love for us in that incarnation, which is the focal point of the whole Christmas season. As I said repeatedly over Advent, until no doubt you were sick of hearing me talk about it, joy is something we must never lose sight of. So fundamental is it to our faith, to our lives as Christians. Let's not lose sight of this truth of the incarnation. And as we move away from its celebration, let's not forget the reality that the Word was made flesh, that the eternal Word of God existing before all time, through whom the world and all that is in it has its being. That Word entered into that world. And entering into that world, into our world, revealed to us the overwhelming, the incredible, the unimaginable love of God for all his creation, for all of us, for humanity past, present, and future, an unconditional love, an eternal love, a love which shines into our world and into our lives and is the cause of our joy. This eternal nature of the one who came, that light of the world, is made clear to us in one of the most famous, most beautiful, and most important passages of Scripture, the one we heard today's, in today's Gospel. As John tells us, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. John tells us too, not just that he is eternal, but of his imprint on all creation. He says, through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men. That light, which shines in the dark, which darkness could not and cannot overpower, is what gives us constant cause for joy. It is this light which continues to shine at all times, no matter the darkness that can sometimes threaten or even seem to engulf us in our lives. Of course, joy is not the same as happiness, and there is a clear and important distinction between them, one which perhaps I should have made more explicit in my Advent sermons, and so let me do so now. Because we're all aware from our own lives that the reality of human existence is one of ups and downs. Not just on a personal level, but as we have seen and continue to see on a local and national and even a global level, bad things happen, sad things happen. Uppermost in our own minds now as a church family will be those who we know to be hospitalized and suffering from this virus. 
And of course, most of all, the sudden and tragic death last week of Father Nick. To be perpetually happy in the face of such things or in the midst of the wider problems of our lives and communities is a tall order. It's rightly impossible for those who are affected most. But the joy that comes from knowing God's love for us is something that can and does and will persist throughout all of these trials and more. As Henri Nouwen, the famous Catholic priest, of, noted of joy as a thing distinct from happiness, he tells us, it is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. So neither the focus throughout Advent on joy nor this reiteration of its importance today are a call to ignore reality, to fix a false smile to your face and pretend everything's fine when it definitely is not. Rather, it's a call to keep that light, that joy, which is the heart of Christmas, alive in our hearts throughout whatever this year brings. To dwell on the reminder of God's love that this season brings us. To choose joy each day, even when we are unhappy. To remind ourselves of the unconditional love that we all have and that cannot be taken away from us. As we look ahead to the year to come, we have no idea what it will bring. Who would have thought this time last year we'd have spent most of the year locked in our homes or locked out of our churches by government edict? But freshly reminded of the universe-altering reality of the Incarnation, we have with us a joy with which we can face the year ahead, whatever it brings to us, to our community, to our nation, and to our world. We know that God is with us, truly with us, supporting us, sustaining us. He is our refuge and our safety. And nothing, not pandemic, not sickness, not loss, not sorrow, not even death itself can take that or him away from us. Amen. Now, in the power of the Spirit, excuse me, let us now declare our faith in one God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
and now in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ Jesus, let us bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as we continue to celebrate in this Christmas season the incarnation of the Word, we pray that you would continue to fill our hearts with joy, to make us ever more mindful and aware of the love you have for us and for each and every person. We pray that we may choose to start each day rejoicing in that fact, and that you may help us to grow in love of you and of one another. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, for your church spread across the world. We pray for all those you call to lead her. We pray for Pope Francis and Patriarch Bartholomew, for Archbishop Justin, for our own Bishop Martin, and for Will, his suffragan. We pray for all those you raised up to be leaders, shepherds of your flock, that they may be worthy of that charge that they may guide and shepherd your people with love and joy, in truth and with integrity. Lord, in your mercy. In our wider communion, we pray for the Episcopal province of Alexandria, for its bishop, clergy, and people. And in our own diocese, we pray for the administration team at Church House. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our own church, for this family who gather each day at St. Saviour's. We pray for those who join us in person, those who join in spirit or online, who come together to give praise, worship, and glory to you. We pray that you may continue to make of us one body in Christ, and that we may grow as that body in love of you and one another. Lord, in your mercy, Pray for all those who live and work and worship in our parish and town. We pray for those who come here to find peace or tranquility, those who are troubled, those who find refuge in this place and in you. We pray too for those who walk by who do not know you, or for those who have known you and have turned from you. We pray that they would turn back to you, and that we would do your command to spread your love, to spread the knowledge of your love to all whom we meet. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those from our family here at St. Saviour's whom we know to be in need at this time, for those who suffer in body, in mind, or in spirit. Among them we pray for Graham and Catherine, Andrew, Deborah, and Sarah, for Keith, Eddie, Christopher, and Marie, for Greg and Anthony, Colleen and David, for Victor, Morag, Isabel, and Caroline, David and Richard, Chris, Alison, and Elaine, Yvonne, Brian, Mia, and Joshua, Christopher and Carol, for Mary, Ken, Linda, and Mark, Max, Colin, Sue, Lindley, Alan, and Jennifer. Father, we pray that they and all those who are suffering may know your healing, loving, and comforting presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those whom we know to be in mourning at this time, among them for Dominique and her family, for Sue, Thomas, and Laura, Cecilia and her family, Anne and her family, and for Eddie, Laura, Megan, and Harry. We pray that they and all those who mourn may know the comfort of the sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy, as we trust to that hope, we commend to you those we know to have died recently. Among them we pray for John Baring, Christopher Horsfall, Anthea Green, Alison Searpole, Jeanette Pettit, Ruth Lane, and Gwyneth Thomas, Nicola Chittenden, Gladys Corris, Frida Mariotta, Therese Collins, Edna Grover, Renata Yanna, Sylvia Jones, George Andrews, Lawrence Stevens, Jasper Goodyear, Paul Joyce, priest, and Nick McNeil, priest. 
We pray too for Edith Adams and Marian Ashworth, whose anniversaries of death fall this week. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we bring to you all these our prayers, along with the secret prayers and petitions of our own hearts, as we trust too in the constant intercession of all the saints in heaven, especially of St. Peter, St. Richard, and of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven and Help of Christians, whom we greet in the words of the angel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. O God, who revealed your only Son to the Gentiles by the leading of a star, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may after this life enjoy the splendor of your gracious Godhead, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, the offerings we make on the nativity of your only begotten Son. For by it you show us the way of truth and the promise of life of the heavenly kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give and It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this fulfilled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in us, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, together with your servants, Pope Francis, Patriarch Bartholomew, Archbishop Justin, Martin, our bishop, Will, his suffragan, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> thy, kingdom come. thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. To all who would accept him, he gave the power to become children of God.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we humbly ask you that through the working of this mystery our offenses may be cleansed and our just desires fulfilled through Christ our Lord. You sit a moment for some notices. <clears throat> Firstly, as I am sure you are all now aware of the very sad news of the death of Father Nick last week, Father Mark has written more about this in the pew sheet and there's a notice outside about the proposals for arrangements for his funeral, which will be held here, and for a memorial service when we have the ability and it is able for us safe, safely to, uh, to do that. I, I know that you will all join me and all of the clergy here in continuing to pray for Dominique and her family and for Father Nick, of course. In some slightly better news. I'm pleased to be able to pass on a message from Keith Metcalf, who, as you may know, has been recently hospitalized with the coronavirus, that he's now out of hospital, and it was very keen that I pass this on to all of you, and to thank you all for your prayers, your good wishes, and everything that you've all been doing to help him and Sue over this very difficult time for them. Otherwise, uh, remember that it is epiphany on Wednesday, that is the end of Christmas. So do join us if you can for the 10.30 Mass, which will be a sung Mass to the extent that we can have a, a solemn celebration in these straitened times. But nonetheless, do join us for that. There'll also be chalk being blessed there, which you can take away to chalk your doors with, your houses, so that traditional uh, uh, blessing of the doors and houses, uh, which we do at Epiphany. So do come along to that if you can. The chalk will be there, uh, blessed on Wednesday and there on Wednesday, but will be there throughout the week um, and if there's any left until the next Sunday. So do come and gather some uh, to bless your homes if you can. Would you please stand now for the blessing? The Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. May God, who by the Incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the Church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Tidings to Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. 
Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. 